This is the study guide for the mid-chapter quiz on chapter 8. It's focusing on polynomials. So first thing you'll be asked to do is find the degree of a monomial. Now, if in that monomial it only has one variable, like in number 1, it's really easy because your degree is just whatever exponent is on that one variable. So the degree of this thing would be 8. It's an eighth degree monomial. Whereas if it has two variables, okay, if there's more than one variable, it could be two, it could be three. But let's look at this example where there's two variables on here. Now these are attached by multiplication. This isn't 4x squared plus y cubed. It's 4x squared times y cubed. So what you have to do is to get the degree of this, you have to add the two and the three. So you get a total degree of five. Now, one thing I want, want you to notice is that in the description, we're looking at the exponent only on the variables. So we're not accounting for, technically there is an exponent on the 4, if you want to think about it. There is an exponent of 1 there, but that is not one of the degrees we count. And let me show you why. So let's look at another example. Let's look at the number 2, okay? Now, technically there is no variable here, but you can kind of consider that it is. Yeah, that's 2 to the 1st. But let's introduce a variable without introducing anything. Let's write x to the 0. Where since x to the 0 is equal to 1, this is the same thing as 2 times 1. Because you can check on your calculator. Raise any number except for 0 itself to the 0th power and you'll get 1. So that's why any constant term as in terms of polynomial, the the... Any, if you have any constant number, and by, by constant we mean not a variable, we mean a number, it's going to have a degree of zero. But either way, your degree, you're looking at essentially the exponent that's attached to variables, whether it's only on one variable or if it's all in one term, the exponents of all the variables added together. Moving on to polynomials. Now, the reason these are called polynomials is because there's more than one. Poly means many. There's more than one term. And the thing that makes it more than one term is they're separated by addition. Okay, we don't separate terms with multiplication. The 4 and the x are all one term. The 3 and the x squared are attached by multiplication. That's all one term. First of all, to get it in standard form, we're supposed to have this in descending order. So I don't like that the highest power is second. So we want to write that first, 3x squared plus 4x. Now it is in descending order. And now that we have that, we can count the number of terms, okay? And we can look at the degree. Now the degree of a polynomial is always going to be just whatever the highest power on all the variables are. So for this monomial, this one has a degree of 2. And this separate monomial, these are separated, that has a degree of 1. We do not add these degrees like we did the previous one because it's not all one term. So the highest degree, the highest exponent in existence is 2. The number of terms you can see, uh, the number of terms is things that are separated by addition. So two things are separated by one addition sign. And they can't be combined. If they could be combined, we would combine them, and it would just be one term, but since you can't, it's just two terms. So this is a second-degree binomial. So this is your polynomial in standard form, and we say it's a second-degree binomial. For number four, we're doing the same thing. So first, make sure it's in descending order. So I notice the highest power is a three, a third power. So I want to write that monomial part first then the next power next highest is a second power so I'll write that in the middle and the lowest power is a power of one so I'll write that on the end and your polynomials degree is always whatever the highest exponent is in this case that is a three the number of terms also happens to be three so we call this a third degree try Nomial. Now, just because these past two examples, these numbers were the same, let me add an example just so you can see how to differentiate. So I'm just writing these other couple examples. 
So again, we only care about the degree and the number of terms. Well, okay, I see a plus sign, so that separates two things. So the number of terms seems to be two. The highest degree seems to be four. Okay, so this would be a fourth degree polynomial, two terms. So fourth degree by, by stands for two, like bicycle, binomial. Now this one's intentionally tricky. So it seems like I have one, two, three, four, seems to have five terms. So um, and once we get past like trinomial, we use for three, binomial, we use when there's two terms. Once you get higher than that, you just, uh, there are words for it, but we tend not to use them a lot in practicality. So you just, you could just say it has, this has five terms, but it does not. Now, can you tell why this doesn't have five terms? Well, the reason is because you actually could simplify this. The 9x squared, the 3x squared, and the regular x squared, which is really a 1x squared. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. So this simplifies to 13x squared minus 7x plus 2. So this one, this, uh, you know, I call this 4c, actually is a second degree trinomial. Because once you simplify it, there are only three terms, trinomial. And the highest power or highest exponent or highest degree, you can call those all the same thing. Um, we tend to say, you know, degree more often, but the highest degree is two. Now, beginning with number five, we're simplifying or combining like terms is another thing you can call that. But what we're doing is we're combining things that can be combined. You can't combine the x squared with the x, just like you can't combine a square centimeter with just a regular centimeter. It doesn't work like that. So they're they're separate, they're they're eternally separate. But you can combine a square x with another square x. Or if you think of terms of units like a square inch and a square inch, a square meter and a square meter. And be careful, even though there's not a coefficient written here, there's an understood invisible one right there. So this actually combines to 4x squared. For the next terms, there's an x here. There's also an x here. So the 7 and the 6 come out to 13. So 6 potatoes plus 7 potatoes, you know, is going to give you 13 potatoes. So, and then we have constant terms. There is no variable there, but you could see them as having the same power like we talked about before. This is like 11x to the zeroth power, but you know how to add constants, so that comes out to 50. For the next one, I'm going to do it a little differently. Um, I prefer to just kind of circle terms like this, like, you know, these two red ones obviously combine, these two blue ones obviously, obviously combine, and the green ones, and this is the only third power. But I'm going to choose to do it this way. Maybe you prefer to do it vertically. I'm going to write this thing here underneath its common term same thing with the 3w same thing with the 1 and if you're more of a vertical thinker you might prefer to do it this way so add the 3 and the 7 you get 10 now careful we never add the exponents when you're adding polynomials this is not going to be 10w to the fourth it's going to be 10w squared if you add a square inch to a square inch you get two square inches if you had three square meters to seven square meters you don't get 10 fourth power meters or 10 meters to the fourth you get 10 square meters so just like it works in units it's going to work similarly here either way you do it horizontally or vertically this is going to be your answer now subtracting is a lot more um, there's a lot more potential for mistakes here you can keep track that, okay, 4 minus 2, that's 2. So if you just do it mentally, first one, 2q squared. 10, and then I see a 7, and here's the temptation. Well, it's plus 10, plus 7, that's 17. But it's 10q minus 7q. So that's actually going to be a positive 3q difference. 7 minus 5 is going to be a positive 2 difference. Now, I don't prefer doing it this way. Here's how I prefer to preset it. You can still get the answer if you do it mentally, but when we're subtracting a polynomial, you're subtracting everything that's in parentheses. 
I like to change the sign on everything in there. But either way, you get this as your result. Now, this is where it gets a lot more interesting. I'm going to, again, start by changing the sign on this. But now we finally have some negative values or, you know, subtraction signs in there. Um, so I'm going to change this minus to a plus and then change the sign on every number in front. So this positive 3 becomes a negative 3. Change this subtract 6 to an add 6 or a positive 6. You can see those two ways. Subtract, change this minus 4 to a plus 4. And what that does, preloading and just pre-changing that subtraction sign, makes it a lot easier for me to forget about this sign altogether without making a mistake. So the 9t to the 4th, that's the only one of its kind. So can't combine that with anything here. Um, I can try to combine the 5t with the 6t, and that comes out to 11t. And the reason I made room for this is I noticed that now there's a negative 3t squared. So now I'm going to fit that in here. And you can do this in several different steps. I just noticed it, so I did it earlier. And then the last ones, the leftovers combined, 8 plus 4 comes out to 12. So this is your result. But all we're doing is combining like terms, whether we're adding them or whether we're subtracting them. For number 9, we're simplifying, and there's understood multiplication right here. So what we can do is distribute that term that's outside to the binomial that's inside the parentheses. So I'm going to write it all. You take the 6x squared and multiply it by the 4x squared. Plus, we're distributing, you take the 6x squared and multiply it by the 3. Now when we're multiplying, this is something we did last chapter, the 6 times the 4, um, or we did it in earlier sections maybe, 6 times 4 is going to be 24 x squared times x squared, we're not adding 6x squared plus 4x squared, we're multiplying. So this will change the exponent. There's two x's here, two x's here, four x's all together. And this last one, 6 times 3, we can multiply the constants, you get 18. And then there's no x's here, so it's going to stay in x squared. And you can't combine these remaining two terms. There's a you know, x to the fourth and an x to the second. Are just different animals. This cannot be simplified further, so this is your final answer. For number 10, again, we're still distributing, so we're just using the distributive property here, and we're, we're distributing that term that's outside, multiplying it by each term that's on the inside. Now, there's a couple options when you write this out. Um, the first one here, we're doing negative 8c to the third times 3c to the second. The negative times the positive, you're going to get a negative 24. And since you're multiplying two variables with the same, two polynomials, you know, with the same base, um, we're going to add those exponents. So that's negative 24c to the fifth. Now, I could write this two different ways. Since I have a negative 8 times this middle term, I prefer to just write it this way. Instead of doing plus negative 8 times 2c, Oftentimes, I'll just write minus 8c to the third times 2c. So this negative that's in front of the 8 kind of gets used interchangeably with a subtraction sign. They behave the same way. But you still multiply the constants. 8 times 2 is 16. This is a c to the third times. That's an invisible c to the first. So c to the fourth. And don't forget, it's negative because it's negative times a positive. So that should be a minus right there. Okay. I could also do plus and negative, but that looks sloppy. It's not like the simplest way to do it, so it's just better to put a subtraction sign instead of adding a negative. And finally, right here, there's a negative times a negative, which again, instead of writing this as a negative with this plus in front, I could write this as just a subtraction sign, but it still acts like a negative 8 times a negative 9, which 9 times 8 is 72. Two negatives multiply to get a positive. And the power on that c is c to the third. All right, so then we're going to factor out. And now I made it a little bit clearer. We're factoring out the GCF. Now, when we take the test on this, you'll be doing the factoring that we did in 
um, maybe what was a recent homework assignment in like 8.5 and further. But we're, we're not factoring it this way where we have like, we're like unfoiling it. For these, I'm going to be very specific on the quiz. Factor the GCF out, which means you take the common factor, focus on the numbers first. So 16, 8, and 20. I'm going to do it a slow way uh, for this first one. So maybe you only know that it's, they're all divisible by 2. So let's pull out a 2. When you pull out a 2, you get 8b to the 4th, and then you get plus 4b squared plus 10b. Oh, but, oh, wait, these are even again, so we could actually, we could pull out another 2, right? So if I pull out another 2, so divide this by 2 again, you got 4b to the 4th plus 2b squared plus 5b. Okay, but then I noticed, hey, there's a bunch of b's here. I'd like to pull out 4b's, oh, but this one only has 2b's. Oh, but this one only has 1b, so the, the, the number of b's you can pull out is determined by the whoever has the least amount of them. So I noticed that I can also pull out, you know, in addition to the two twos that I can pull out, I can factor out or you can kind of see it as divide out. I don't want to say divide out. I'd rather say factor out. But when we factor out that B, we basically drop the power on each B by one. So this becomes 4B cubed. This is 2B to the first. I choose not to write that exponent. And if you pull the b out of this, you just have 5. And then your final answer is, even though this is not wrong, it's not as simplified as can be, 2 times 2 is 4, so it's 4b times everything that's inside those parentheses right there. And this is factoring out the greatest common factor from that polynomial. The next one, I'm, instead of doing it the slower way, I'm going to do it the faster way. So for number 12, I'm going to make deliberate efforts to pick out the greatest common factor instead of like pulling out little pieces at a time. Now the greatest common factor here, since it's a very obvious number, it's the number 11 that these are all divisible by. So I'm going to pull the 11 out. Now I want to see if I can factor out an x. Well, all of these have an x, oh, except for the last one. So for this specific example, you can't pull an x out because there is no x in the last term. So we can only factor out an 11. So basically, we're, we're kind of dividing every term by 11 to get what's left when you factor out the 11. So this becomes 7. The 22 divided by 11 becomes 2. 33 divided by 11 becomes 3. And uh, after that 2, I forgot my x squared there. And then minus 3x. And then minus 8. This is factoring the GCF, greatest common factor, out of this polynomial. For number 13, we're going to be multiplying binomials. So remember, we're going to be doing basically distributive property. So if I distribute the x in the first one to each of these, that's x plus squared plus 9x. If I just distribute the 2 to the second part of the binomial, that's 2x plus 18. I'm multiplying these. Now, this is the right answer, but it's not completely simplified. These two are like terms. There's only one x squared, but the 9 and the 2x can combine to form an 11x. So I'm going to combine those to get this as my final answer. For the next one, I'm going to do it using the rectangular method, just in case you prefer that way. But th this, if you, I don't care which way you do it, so don't think that um, you have to follow the method I use as long as you get the answer. So like I said, you, you can do it by just doing this distributive property here. Some people use that FOIL mnemonic. I don't like to use that um, because it's just distributive property. There's no need to complicate it memorizing some other, some words that have a weird meaning and it's, it's just pointless. So, but for this one, so you can do the little distributive property or if you want to do the rectangular method, I'm going to show you and remind you how to do it here. But don't feel that you have to do I will never ask you to do this on a quiz or a test if it's not your preferred method. So uh, 4b times b, that's 4b squared. Notice how that's just multiplying these right here. And then if we do 4b times 8, well, that's like right here, the rectangular method, or that I call it the Punnett square method. If you do this column times this row, 
um, you get negative 32b if I multiply those. And then if I do this column times this row, that's negative 1 times b, or just negative b. And then negative 1 times negative 8, a negative times a negative is a positive. That's going to be a positive 8. I like to write the plus just to help me remember. Um, but what you get is 4b squared minus b minus 32b plus 8. But here's the thing. These are like terms right here. This is like a negative 1b. That's a negative 32b. So altogether, you have negative 33b. And then the other terms don't combine with anything. So I'm just going to write this in descending order. The highest power first. And this thing that doesn't have any variables at the end. Either way you do it, you get the whether you do it using you know distributive property or using the rectangular method, they, you get the exact same answer, and you choose whatever strategy you prefer. Now for number fifteen, I find rectangular method to be helpful for this one because you're um, you have a binomial times a trinomial, so that's like h plus two, and then it just I find it keeps it more organized. So I'll do this one with the rectangular method, and the next one, which, which is also a binomial times a trinomial, I'll do without the rectangular method, just to show you that, you know, it's just as easy to do it with both methods. But here, um, you know, I can, I'm basically distributing the H to everything in the second binomial. But if you do the rectangular method, that's 3H cubed. Remember, this is H to the first power. That's H squared. You add the powers. Plus, that's h to the second, because that's an h to the first, times an h to the first. You add 1 and 1 to get 2, right? And then minus 7h. And if you're doing it, you know, using the distributive property, you're distributing the 2. If you're using the rectangular method, you're just multiplying this column times this row. That's a plus 6h squared. This is a plus 2h. And this is a minus ne uh, negative 7 times 2 is 14. And then conveniently in the rectangular method, the like terms are always like diagonal from each other. It just almost always happens to work that way. So the 3h squared doesn't have any like terms, so I'm just going to write that. But the h squared, uh, 3h cubed is what I meant to say. The h squared, there's a 1h squared and a 6h squared, so that's 7h squared. There's an h to the first power term, but there's a positive 2 and a negative 7, so that actually comes out to a negative 5h. And then this negative 14, there are no other constants, so there's nothing to combine it with. So I just write that minus 14. But either way you do it, this is what you get as your answer. This is just like the last one in the sense that it's a binomial. Binomial meaning two terms times a trinomial. Now notice that FOIL does not work. If you like the little FOIL method, it does not work. Because if you used FOIL, you'd end up skipping the, the negative 4z term. That's why I don't like to use it. And that's why I say it's basically pointless. So I'm going to do it this time without drawing the little rectangle, without drawing the little what I call sometimes the Punnett square. And I'm just going to distribute. So we have z cubed by multiplying these first terms. Then we have minus 4z squared. Then we have plus 9z. That's doing the first distribution. And then if this is a negative 1 times all these things. Whenever you're multiplying a negative 1 times something, you're not changing anything. You're just changing the sign. So that's negative z squared plus 4z minus 9. And you just look for terms that can combine. Sometimes you can, you can stack them underneath each other if you prefer. But I see a cube term, but there's no other cubes. I see a squared term, and I'm going to circle that and any terms that are like it. So that's going to be a minus 5z squared okay i'm gonna write the z cube because i didn't combine or anything now i'm gonna look for um i'm gonna look for z to the first power terms i'm gonna circle this instead of writing a square there's a z term okay there's another z term and notice how i like the circle include the sign that's in front of it that's a really good idea to do um because like say if i just circled like if i just put a box around the four i might accidentally add four you know to negative z or something like that but you want to preserve your sign uh were applicable so um, but anyways this the 4z and the 9z make a 13z and then the negative 9 doesn't combine with anybody so he's just stuck by himself and you get that as your answer whether you use that rectangular method or whether you use this just distributive property this will be the last one on this first part of the video but basically it's just giving an application to you know what we just did 
So if you have a rectangle, let's draw a rectangle, and the length is 2r plus 3, and the width is r minus 4, we want to know whoops, what represents the area of this thing. So the area of that thing as well as the length times width. Since area is length times width, and your length is 2r plus 3, and you can actually use these interchangeably. You know, it doesn't matter if you say this is length, this is width, or this is width, and this is length. Either way it works. But basically, it just gives us an application to multiply polynomials. So we get 2r squared by doing this. This is minus 8r. This is plus 3r. And that's minus 12. These two terms combine right here, the middle terms. So 2r squared minus 5r minus 12. That is the polynomial that represents the area of this triangle. All right, that's the end of part one of the study guide.